Okay, we've explored 2D plotting. Let's go into 3D. Now, as I mentioned before, MATLAB plotting functions are very powerful. Anything you can imagine you can do. Well, there's plenty of reasons you'd want to do a 3D plot, so let's figure that out. Now, if I'm going to plot in 3D, the first thing I'm going to need is a list of X's and a list of Y's. I'm going to do this in kind of a particular way, and I'll tell you why here as I go. So I'm going to say capital X goes from minus 5 in steps of a half to plus 5. All right there. So I've got a list of 21 numbers. That's a vector 21 elements long. Now I want y to be the same thing. And so I'm just going to say y equals x. So I've got two of them now. There's two things to note here. One is that I used capital X and capital Y for a reason. It's important to note that MATLAB is case sensitive. So capital X and little x, those are two different variables. The other thing to note here is that I've made a list of x's and y's, and they're only 21 elements long. And in order to make a surface plot, or a, a 3D plot of a surface, I'm going to need a matrix of x and a matrix of y's, because I'm going to need to calculate my function at all possible combinations of x and y. Well, I can't do that right now. Somehow I've got to turn that x and y vector into x and y matrices. Well, you could write a routine for this if you wanted to, but this is a need that's common enough that the function already exists. And it looks like this. All right, it's called mesh grid, M-E-S-H-G-R-I-D. And the reason I wrote these capital X and capital Y is I want them to be different than little x and little y, and it's just easier to define functions using little x and little y. I definitely want to put a semicolon at the end of this, because I don't want all these numbers coming to the screen. So hit that, and look what I've got now. Little x is 21 by 21, and little y is 21 by 21. I think I can edit these. Yeah, there's what it looks like. So you can see there's 5, minus 5, minus 4.5, minus 4, minus 3.5. There'll be 21 of those, 21 columns. There's also going to be 21 rows. And for uh, x here, all the, all the rows are going to be the same. So you see how that works. So the next thing we're going to need is a function. I wrote an optimization book a little while back, and there's some handy functions in the back. So I pulled one of those out. And so I called it F, so I'm going to hit F equals, and I'm going to hit the up arrow, because I had typed this in before. And there it is. Okay, what does this look like? Well, there's a couple different kinds of 3D plots I can use. One of them is called contour, and it just goes X, Y, F, there. And that's a contour plot. Now, for reasons that are clear now, my students called this the butterfly function. I've got one problem here. This uh, axes are not square. We could fix that. Let's, let's do this. Let's move this over, and I'll make this bigger so we can see it. This way we'll be able to work on the plot and make that purposely not square. Okay, say axis square. Now it's square. I can put a grid on that, too, if I want to. Now, as I resize the plot over here, the axes stay square, so it's not distorted at all. Now, you'll notice there's not a real high resolution here. Notice these lines, uh, there's, there's the line segments here are kind of jagged. If I wanted to make that smoother, all I have to do is go over here, and instead of saying step in 0.5, just reduce that step size. Now, these plot, the data set's going to get big fast if you do that. So this is OK. Um, maybe I don't like seeing that in two dimensions. Maybe I want to see it in three dimensions. Let's get rid of that. There's another kind of plot called a surface plot. And it's real easy. Just type in surf x, y, f. Let's do the same thing. And there it is. Put there where you can see it. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can get a good look at it. Now, there it is. I can click over here. In fact, I don't think I even need to click. I guess I do. Click on Rotate over here. And I can start looking at it from different 
angles, different directions. I can look at it from the top if I want to. Right there, that doesn't look much like a butterfly plot anymore, but part of that is because the resolution isn't great. And you see down here on the, uh, as I rotate and hold the button down, you can see azimuth and elevation down in the bottom left of the plot window there. You can see what angles I'm at. Look at it from the bottom. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this color scheme. I, I like brighter colors. And so there's a, a, a command called color map. And there's a bunch of different color maps defined, and they have names. I like one that's called Jet. So there it is. Now, there are other color maps. There's one called, if you like gray, you just type in gray. There's another one called Bone. Okay, a little, a little bit uh, friendlier on the eyes, I think, than gray. Somebody decided to make one, uh, make ones that uh, name them after the uh, seasons of the year. So if I say color map, oops, color map uh, winter, there's that. I can do color map summer. And there's a bunch of others. I like jet, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, the hard part here is you know, I don't know where the x and y axes are really in, in three dimensions. I should probably label those. So earlier I defined, I, I typed in a command x label to label the x-axis. So I'm going to type in XLA. If I hit the up arrow, there it is again. It was in my command history somewhere. I haven't cleared it yet, so it's still lurking back there. There it is. Now I know where the x-axis is. Let's do the y label. There it is. Okay, there's the y-axis. Notice I guess I didn't cut the format quite the same, but what? Well, here, can I fix the format? Bet I can. There. Done. Okay, fix the format. Now one of the things I can do over here is I can zoom in and zoom out, and I can also shift the graph. If I go over here and just grab this z-axis, I can shift it up and down if I want to. All right. Or I can zoom in and zoom out. Can I go over here? I bet I can. So I can shift this around in space as I like. And orient in space however I like. Maybe I want to have the benefits of both a surface plot and a contour plot. Wouldn't that be great? Well, somebody thought of that. So what I'm going to do is type in surf C, X, Y, F. Watch what happens here. Put this where we can see it. Now what you've got is a contour plot underneath the surface plot. So you can see what's going on. And again, let's do color map jet. It probably looks better on the screen, too. So you can see that. And as you rotate this, the contour rotates with it. Now, if you decide you want to edit parts of the plot, you can go up there and click on the, uh, click on the arrow and then uh, edit the parts of the plot you want. But there you go. There's a surface and a contour plot in three dimensions.